Inside Gaming is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Defend yourself against DDoS attacks at expressvpn.com slash inside. Hey, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily. Oh boy. Guiding. Oh, Guiding. Oh, hey, welcome back to Google Inside Google. Gaming Daily for Tuesday. We all know that Google Stadia has struggled, to put it mildly, in its first three months of life. Mm, yeah, you might have even seen a video about it on this channel, or two or three or 20, 40, 50, 60. Uh, yeah, just biding our like time that. until Cyberpunk. Yeah, the streaming service has been criticized for a lot of reasons, like laggy gameplay and oh. not launching with all the features they promised. I'm like, really <laughs> laggy. <laughs> yeah, by far the biggest knock on Stadia is the fact that it just doesn't have a lot of games. Very few. Despite the fact that Google created a whole new studio led by industry veterans to make games for Stadia, the fact is that most of the games available are ones that you've probably already played somewhere else. You take Destiny 2's name out of your mouth! I'm sorry. Google, no, you're fine. Oh. But also, there just aren't many games. Period. Yeah, I mean, currently it's got less than 30 games available as of right now, and by, uh, you know, <laughs> no offense to guilt, but uh, most of them aren't exactly exclusives. Just a handful of those games, you know, like four of them are indies, which is weird because there are a lot of great indie games out there. You'd think that would be a pretty easy port to Stadia, but I don't know what Jade Raymond and company are doing over there. It's their new exclusive studio is not cranking them out. The whole promise of Stadia is that it would break down a lot of the barriers to publishing and that it would be pretty easy to get games on the platform quickly, shattering that glass ceiling for games everywhere. Mm -hmm. Pop. So what is the deal, Google? What's the deal with Google? Oh, no, 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 I'm dating a high schooler. Well, now we actually know why a lot of publishers and developers have been reluctant to sign up with Google, and it boils down to a pretty good reason. That cheddar. Oh, moolah. Cash. Yeah. Oh, Red. hard coin. Yeah. I'm talking about that bag. That bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Google is, after all, a young, scrappy startup. It's mm -hmm. not like they have a lot of extra cash to throw mm -hmm. around. Just like Jerry Seinfeld. Girlfriend. No. Oh, yeah. You've never lived till you've seen Jerry Seinfeld at a high school spin the bottle party. I just don't think that seven minutes is enough! <laughs> how did, how did we decide on a bottle for this? Anymore? Yeah, it's not like they offered a $30 million price for going to the moon or anything. Uh, weirdly, it sounds like Google has been frugal. Change the name to frugal. Ah! <laughs> F-R-O-O-G-L-E. Right? Frugal, when it comes to getting games on Stadia. At least that's what some developers told Business Insider recently. They talked to a number of developers and two publishing executives who said that Google didn't offer them enough money to port their games to Stadia. One person described as a, quote, prominent indie developer said that they were approached by Stadia about putting their game on the platform. The developer said that, quote, usually with that kind of thing, they lead with some kind of an offer that would give you an incentive to go with it. But in this case, any incentive was kind of non-existent. I bet they're doing that thing where it's like, Listen, this is this is the next thing. You want to be on this. You want exposure, it be don't about you? Money. One publishing executive said that Google's offer was apparently so low that it wasn't even part of the conversation. Oh yeah. my god! Would this you do it for ten bucks? Yeah, and you need incentives in Google's case to make it worth it financially because they don't have a giant audience that you would want to reach. You know, like Steam or a unique platform like the Switch. So if there's no incentive, there's no real financial reason to bring your game to Stadia. Other than street cred, it's a family. My Uso Stadia. So that's one reason there aren't a ton of games on Stadia right now. But there's another big reason too. How big was it? So big. Extremely big. Lots yeah. of the developers who talked to Business Insider also said they aren't convinced that Google is in video games for the long haul. The fear that Google would give up on Stadia was repeatedly brought up by everyone Business Insider talked to for their story. Because they almost certainly will. One said that, with Google's history, I don't even know if they're working on Stadia in a year. That wouldn't be something crazy that Google does. It's within their track record. Record. Zach, tell us more about this sweet track record Google has. Remember this, dear viewer, the phrase track record will be important in just a moment. Google has a long history of starting projects with a lot of fanfare and then abandoning Buckle in, boys! It's time for a list! Google Plus, Google Wave, Google Glass, Google Allo, Google for Burns, Project Tango, Google Portfolios, Google Spaces, Google Nexus, Dog, you get the idea, the list goes on. There's a whole website devoted to tracking projects that Google's killed and it's not hard to imagine that Stadia will be one day on that list. I mean, we don't need a whole website, do we? Pass around a word, yeah, well, the website is <laughs> do it. I think there's charm to it, but you know who all who does hold the track record? Usain Bolt. Oh, I thought you were about to toss to ExpressVPN. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by the fastest man on earth. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a very good bit. Proceed with the video. Google has got quite the history of throwing a load of money at giant projects and then, uh, 
you know, doing kind of a dignified walk away. Well, it's that's like, all the time we have. I've got to go play nothing. <laughs> when it came to that $30 million lunar prize, nobody ended up winning it because it turns out it's really hard to go to the moon. Horse well, that's why we never went. And while video games aren't quite as hard as space travel, Google is learning that it's not the easiest market to break into. Game development is expensive and takes years. And that's after you've assembled a team of highly skilled, highly paid people to do the work. <laughs> We've got a team of specialists flying in from uh, Columbia right now. <laughs> if there's one thing playing a lot of dreams has taught me, it's like making games is easy. Well, it, it was yeah. an indie developer and then a guy came in and he's like, this case is federal now, and like 16 <laughs> dudes came in with sunglasses and started taking boxes Three of cases, evidence away. Yeah, shredding stuff. It's like yeah, this okay. is out of your jurisdiction. Oh, you son of a. Yeah. You son of a. So yeah, there are already some very well-established players in the space with a lot of brand loyalty built up over the years. Yeah, Nintendo might be shit about its refund policy, but they've got a lot of people who still love them. Stadia doesn't exactly have a franchise character like Mario, who people have known since they were children. Yes, true. Guys, look, it's way. <laughs> a self-driving car! It's, it's Stadia Jeff! Hi, <laughs> Connor! <laughs> there were also reports, Stadia Jeff, come on, we gotta do the rest of the story. I love to play video games. <laughs> there were also reports earlier this year that Stadia's player base is pretty non-existent. No! That's the sound I used to make when I was cutting myself shaving before I had Manscaped. You know, we've all had a time where we've, you know, sliced our little boys shaving and, you know, maybe sometimes you get a little closer than you thought. But men, please start taking notes because Manscaped accidents are finally a thing of the past. No more cuts and nicks with the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. This is their third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology so you can keep your bad boys nice and smooth. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. So one of the coolest features is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer, more precise trimming. That's right, finally, for the first time, you can groom your nards in the dark and I can't ask for more in life. Let's not also forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a rapid charging dock powered by USB. So many people have written in stories about how the Lawnmower 3.0 has changed their lives. They've even included pics so I could see the smoothness for myself, and they are not kidding. That's smooth. So if you want to try this for yourself, you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code INSIDE20 at manscaped.com. I promise you, your balls will thank you. 20% off free shipping with the code INSIDE20 at manscaped.com. Thanks. Back to you, boys. Back in January, it was reported that downloads of the Stadia app had dropped by half since November, the Gamers Month. Likewise, Destiny 2 saw its player base drop by more than half since the launch of Stadia. It dropped from more than 19,000 players the week after launch to 8,000 players at the beginning of this year, 2020, the Gamers Year. So uh, even on Stadia's launch day in November, Kotaku's Jason Schreier, friend of the show, reported that it already looks like a monumental flop and that he, quote, heard from one person involved that pre-orders were below expectations. Honestly, Stadia is having the same problem that a lot of launch consoles have, a limited library. Just a little tiny bitty library. It's, it's like one of those free libraries that you find on the corner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Instead of taking a book and giving a book, they just grab the book out of your hands and then slam the door shut and lock it. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the big reasons why lots of people hold off on buying a launch console. They wait until it's got a big enough library or if there's like an exclusive they really want. But uh, in the case of the Switch though, Nintendo had the foresight to roll out the red carpet for indie developers. My, my kids! <laughs> now introducing Snake Pass! Come, mini developers, and dine in our halls! Feast with us! We fattened a calf for you! <laughs> a generous dowry for the developer! Nintendo did not always have a reputation of being very indie friendly, but in the early days of the Switch, they were super communicative with indie devs, and their regular Nindies showcase helped to spotlight indie games on the platform. The result helped both sides. The Switch got to fill out its library with solid indie games, and developers got a new audience for for their games. Oh, happy third birthday, by the way. Oh, happy Switch. birthday, Switch! That seems like a blueprint that Google should be following with Stadia. Indie games over the last decade have gotten better and better with games like Stardew Valley, Dead Cells, and Hollow Knight winning all kinds of praise. And sure, there's a lot of shovelware too, especially on the Switch, <laughs> Shovel Knight. But Stadia is at the point where it needs to make some kind of value proposition to its users, especially since there's still no free tier and the people who bought the Founders Bundles are now having to pay $10 a month to stay on Stadia. Or they got it for free and then canceled after three months like I did. How many people are still on Stadia. Can't wait for games. 
Earlier this year, they said that 120 games were coming to the platform this year, including a whopping 10 exclusives. But if they're gonna hit that number, indie games will probably have to be part of that equation. Interestingly, Apple has put a lot of money down when it comes to its own service, Apple Arcade. Apple reportedly invested 500 million big ones in the subscription service, and developers were each given millions of dollars each to fund their games. And big ones, uh, dollars. That is that the is current right. exchange yes. rate, yes. Okay, yeah. Zach, you love Apple Arcade. Yeah, I genuinely, non-ironically love Apple Arcade. Of course, you know, Apple Arcade has a different model than Stadia. Stadia is basically a storefront that you subscribe to, and you get a few free games a month thrown in. With Apple Arcade, though, you can play the whole catalog for five bucks a month. It's actually getting pretty good reviews. Kotaku called it mobile gaming without all the bullshit. Yes. Uh, meaning you can just okay, leave it to them to stay edgy. Meaning you can just play a game without all the microtransactions and gotcha mechanics that plague mobile games. Side dose of, of commentary from somebody who still pays for Apple Arcade. It's a really good service. Just play a game for five minutes, you don't like it, that's fine. You just zip off to another game and then, you know, if you get through the catalog and you really aren't liking any of it, well, cancel it, five bucks a month. So we'll see if Stadia loosens up the purse strings, but for now it feels like they're neglecting one of the most fundamental parts of starting up a game service. Any guesses? Any guesses uh, on what that could uh, be? Hardware. Hammers and nails. Hammers? No, it's games. Oh, oh yeah. that does make sense. Yeah. Hey, but on the bright side, at least they're not NVIDIA, which has pissed off a bunch of developers, and they're all yanking their games off GeForce now. They're, they're all really yanking are. off. Yank it <laughs> off. It's so funny how differently like developers and NVIDIA see that service. <laughs> yeah, Check out the weekend video. Yeah, it came out on oh. Sunday. Okay, so let's jump one more time into the Google Stadia pool. Ah, Ooh. nice and refreshing. Washes that butt sweat clean off. Yeah, although at this point, it's kind of like one of those pools that hasn't been cleaned in months, and now there's a bunch of leaves and the water's turning brown. Can't really skateboard in it either, because there's, <laughs> there's standing water. So. Uh, we like to call that divorced dad pool, because as we all know, the state